every decade has its defining car type. The 1960s was the muscle car era. The 70s saw the rise of the hatchback. The 1990s were, for some reason, awash with coupes, which gave way to the MPVs of the new millennium. And since then, obviously, the roads have been clogged with SUVs. The 1980s car market, of course, was dominated by one of the most iconic product niches of all time. Nothing is more symbolic of the time than a hot hatchback, usually with red seatbelts, blazing fog lights and chirruping front tyres. Ford has form when it comes to bringing performance to the everyman by offering fast versions of its bread and butter products. The Cortina, the Capri and even the Ca all received sporting makeovers, and the same was true for the Mark I Ford Fiesta. Ford tested the waters in 1980 with the 1.3-litre Supersport, before the 1.6-litre XR2 debuted the following year. Incidentally, the X denoted the X-Pack of performance add-ons, and the R stood for racing. With bumper-mounted fog lights, a chunky matte black air dam, wheel arch extensions and rear spoiler, and cool pepper pot alloy wheels, the XR2 looked every inch the hatch with attitude. Launched in 1983, the 205 is credited with turning Peugeot's fortunes around, and a great deal of its appeal was down to the way it drove. McPherson strut front and torsion bar rear all independent suspension gave it the ride and handling that punched well above its relatively light weight. And to exploit this to the full, the GTI was launched in the car's second year with a 105 horsepower 1.6 litre engine. This got a 10 horsepower boost in 1986, the same year it was joined by its bigger brother, the 1.9 litre GTI, which had 128 horsepower and could get to 60 miles an hour in less than 8 seconds. Famed for its chuckability, the larger car did have a bit of a reputation for being a handful at the limit, barely reined in by its all-round disc brakes, where the lesser car may do with drums at the back. And is it the rose-tinted spectacles of nostalgia, or does the Peugeot 205 GTI still look spot on even today? It was certainly rare in never receiving a redesign in its 25-year production run. Ford of Europe's hottest models have worn the RS badge ever since the World Rally and British Saloon Car Championship winning RS 1600 of the 1970s. The RS Turbo was likewise originally envisioned as a rear-wheel drive rally car, but it proved too uncompetitive, so Ford moved on to develop the mighty Group B RS 200. Instead, the public was treated to a fearsome, if unrefined, hooligan hot hatch they could buy from the showroom floor. The turbocharged and fuel-injected 1.6-litre engine produced 133 horsepower, enough for Ford to fit the Escort RS Turbo with a limited-slip front differential, a production car first. Despite this, the ride and handling were distinctly old-school, with turbo lag and torque steer aplenty. Just 5,000 were built, and they were all white. Very, very white, with colour-coded everything, including the very unsubtle rear wing. Turbocharging may be ubiquitous today, on both everyday and performance models, but back in the 1980s, it was a signal of intent. And not usually a subtle one thanks to the relatively primitive state of turbocharging technology. Like the 205 GTI, the second-generation R5 Turbo still looks just right, thanks to chunky bumpers, wheel arch extensions and side skirts, chic yellow fog lights and Alpine-style alloys. It had the go to match the show as well, with 115 horsepower from its turbocharged 1.4-litre Clayon engine that 
with just 850 kilograms to motivate, propelled the car to 60 miles an hour in seven and a half seconds. The car was lowered front and back, gained an oil cooler, supplementary fuel tank, and quicker steering. And in 1989, an R5 Turbo took the win in the Rally Côte d'Ivoire, the only Group N car ever to achieve an outright victory at a WRC event. Of all the cars on this list, it is the Volkswagen Golf GTI that everyone remembers. It's because the Golf was the real all-rounder of the pack, remaining comfortable, reliable and classy when not cocking a rear wheel in the air round corners. The first iteration of the Mark II Golf GTI was launched in 1984, and using the same 112 horsepower 1.8 litre as the Mark I was pretty underwhelming in its bigger, heavier replacement. It wasn't until a couple of years later that the engine gained a multi-valve head, upping power to 139 horsepower, plus stiffer, lower suspension. The one to have, though, is the Big Bumper model from 1989 onwards, which, equipped with BBS alloy wheels, looks every inch the 1980s icon. Never quite garnering the same attention as the Ford efforts, Vauxhall has nevertheless produced plenty of pretty and powerful hot hatches over the years, with the Astra GTE setting the ball rolling. The original iteration, launched in 1984, was not a standard setter, with both its performance and handling being uninspiring and off the pace. So, Vauxhall's engineers went back to the drawing board and did it properly so that the 16-valve red-top version launched in 1988 was an entirely different beast. In addition to the multi-valve ported and polished head, the 2-litre engine now included forged pistons, sodium-filled valves and hollow cams to let it spin more easily and produce a class-leading 158 horsepower. Shorter springs with matched dampers, beefy anti-roll bars and a wider track with negative camber took care of the handling. And it even came with the most 1980s digital dashboard you have ever seen. The AXGT, launched in the same year, is almost the antithesis of the Astra GTE, making just 86 horsepower, that's right, 86, for its 1.4 litre engine. However, the AX was firmly in the yet to be invented super mini category and weighed a scant 722 kilograms. But any racer will attest that weight is the enemy of performance, and the AX GT was perhaps the most agile of the 1980s hot hatch pack it was still able to crack the 0-60mph move in less than 10 seconds, and thanks to being much more aerodynamic than its looks suggest, could reach 112 miles per hour. Contemporary road tests suggest that the AXGT may just have been the most fun too. <laughs> <laughs> 